What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of A Dancer's Dialogue. Today we are here in New York City with the lovely Miss Janelle Fitzgerald. Um, Janelle and I were actually roommates at an American Ballet Theater summer intensive years ago, so finally getting to reunite <laughs> and see each other. So thank you for being here, Janelle. Thanks so for coming. Good to see you. Janelle is in the BFA program at Alvin Ailey here in New York and also studying psychology at Fordham University. So Janelle, today we just want to talk about um, your experience as a dancer and while also learning about psychology and being able to understand like the inner workings of a dancer's mind while they're also training and you know, we all know how intense the dance world can be, not <laughs> only physically but mentally, but so anyways, um, when did you get started with dance, Janelle? You know, where did your dance story start? I started when I was five, um, pretty much typical start. My parents were like, let's get some activities going, like, mm -hmm. we'll try out some dance. I um, just fell in love with it. Yeah, I actually, this is pretty interesting, my first year dancing when I was five, um, I had to quit because I had really bad separation anxiety from my mom. Aww. Um, and that's interesting that we're talking about like psychology in relation to dance mm. because it started with me very early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but then the next year I started up again and never looked back and here we are. <laughs> yeah, so how long have you been here in New York now? So I'm a senior, so this is my fourth year here. Um, I lived on campus for two years, and now I'm a full-blown adult. <laughs> I live yes. by myself <laughs> off campus. Yes, awesome. Yeah. So what, how has your experience been at Alvin Ailey? Like, My experience has been very different than other people's experiences because I was injured very early on. So my freshman year, um, I came in super excited. Um, my freshman year was great, actually. Um, it was a super, super challenging program, but I got really strong. Um, and then I went to the Paul Taylor Summer Intensive that summer. And on the second day of the intensive, I was landing from a jump and I broke my fifth metatarsal. No. So <laughs> I it was so rehabbing rough. from that for a while. Um, yeah, you've I, had to go through a couple surgeries. Yeah, I had two different surgeries. Um, and to be honest, that experience has really shaped my love for psychology even more mm -hmm. um, because I noticed a lot that there was huge emphasis on the physical rehab, like going to physical mm -hmm. therapy, getting your muscles back, all of that, but no one really talked to me about how I was feeling emotionally. Oh my gosh, and that is so hard, like not being able to do what you love, just having yeah. to stop and be patient. Yeah, so I was going to my classes, but I was sitting, and I was watching, and I was taking notes. Um, looking back now, it was a great experience because it's a different way to view a dance class, and you can really focus on uh, other people and not just worry about yourself. So it's a totally different and unique perspective that I think was very beneficial. But when it was happening, I was not very happy so <laughs> because I was just like itching to get up and be dancing with all my friends. Um, so definitely, um, you know, in the beginning, right after I broke my foot, I was not weight bearing on crutches. I basically couldn't do anything by myself. Oh my goodness. Um, I went home to Connecticut and I stayed with my family. My mom helped with everything. Um, you know, just getting water was hard. <laughs> so that definitely brought a damper on my emotional side. I was, uh, sad, getting depressed, because I couldn't see my friends, I couldn't do anything, I was just really like immobilized. I'm sure any dancer that's gone through an injury, even if it's being off for like a couple of weeks, right. is right. so hard. I yeah. can't even imagine, like, I mean I can, I do know yeah, that, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like, <laughs> it's definitely so hard, like, so is that what like drew you to psychology, or had you already been studying it at that So point? I took AP Psychology as a senior in high school, kind of just for fun. Mm -hmm. um, my brother had taken it, and he was like, oh, you'd really like this. So I was like, okay, like, I'll just make it one of my, one of my last classes. Mm -hmm. 
and I fell in love with it. My teacher was awesome, and I just found it like so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um, are you trying to work with dancers as a psychologist? Yeah, so I want to, so I'm currently going to be graduating with a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Dance um, and a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. So I want to go to grad school eventually to get my master's in psychology um, because I want to do psychotherapy specifically with dancers, um, focusing on uh, burnout, Injuries, eating disorders, self-care, career change, yeah. like any dancer specific mm -hmm. You're problem. gonna go through one of those at like some point and yeah. as a dancer, like that is just, we need, we need tools and we need support yeah. to go into this world that is so, you know, full of high competition and stress and yeah. anxiety and, you know, so much pressure and challenges and lots of joy, of course, but yeah. like there's we need support and tools For to be sure. able to handle that. So, as you've been learning about psychology, what are some of the main ways that you know things like stress and anxiety like show up in dancers, either mentally or physically? Like, that's a good question. So, I think that's a good distinction. There are definitely two ways that stress can uh, manifest itself in a dancer. Um, emotionally and physically. I think the most obvious would be the physical uh, for a dancer. Um, if they get really sweaty when they get nervous, or if they tense up their muscles when they're anxious, um, or right before they go on stage if it's like hard for them to breathe, so physical symptoms like that, like uh, being harder to breathe, accelerated heart rate, mm -hmm. sweating, tensing of muscles, um, those are mm -hmm. all. And why is that that um, stress as a mental thing translates physically in the body? I feel like stress affects you as a whole person, mm -hmm. not just mentally. Yeah. Um, so when you're stressed, your body can go into like a fight or flight response. Mm -hmm, like the parasympathetic. Yeah, the parasympathetic nervous yeah. system. Um, or so no, it's the sympathetic nervous system. Yeah. Right? That's the fight or flight kind of stress, yeah. like high cortisol, like high blood pressure, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So those type of things really get like amplified um, unconsciously. You, like mm -hmm. you're not doing it to yourself. Um, so those types of things happen, they're like, they're unavoidable basically, mm -hmm. unless you have some stress management techniques to sort of combat those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then how can it show up um, in a non-physical form? In non-physical form, it shows up, I would say mostly in uh, self-talk, negative self-talk, um, like, like hypercritical yeah, of yourself. Being, it's very common for dancers to be perfectionists, so having that really perfectionist tendency towards yourself, always looking at yourself in the mirror, oh my legs not cross Where enough, am I not enough? Right, no. I'm not tall enough, my arms are too short, like any of those types of things. Mm, yeah, and that's stressful, like we already have so much criticism coming from mm -hmm. like teachers or just comparison that yeah. to be also having that inner doing it to yourself dialogue. just makes it twice as worse. Yeah. yeah. So do you feel that um, having something like chronic stress or anxiety can manifest into actual like injuries? Oh, and definitely hurt the body. Definitely. Um, I think one way is because being stressed actually makes you really tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and when you're tired, you aren't paying as much attention to your technique or your placement or your alignment, um, and it can be really detrimental to a split-second injury. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For, like, for mine, I was exhausted that day. It was the second day of the intensive. So hard. The first day, mm -hmm. I went all for it. I was super sore yeah. to it, and I was just oh my gosh. really yeah, dizzy and tired and lost it, and boom, two and a half years of my life were just no dance. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> so, so crazy. Yeah, just, especially if you're subconsciously distracted or stressed yeah. out or sad or, you know, if you're not fully there, like, mm -hmm. in the moment just like not being totally aware of like your placement or alignment right. can lead to just that split second like yeah. wrong step. And even the opposite of that, if you're like hyper aware and you're tense everywhere, you can mm -hmm. be tensing the wrong muscles, you can cause strains, mm -hmm. you can you can overdo it in the opposite way. Yeah, or just if you're someone that chronically holds 
tension yeah. somewhere, like, you know, a lot, like, probably in the shoulders mm -hmm. and neck, or sometimes even, like, the stomach, like, yeah. clenching, like, in your psoas or something. Yeah, like, for sure. That, over time, just, like, having repetitive, like, poor movement habits because you're holding yourself in a tense, yeah. like, stressed out way, like, over time, that will, like, do that. Yeah, also, I like, actually just, know a lot of dancers that have, they hold tension in their jaw, and that leads mm -hmm. to headaches like really quickly oh, and when you get a headache you know you're sort of foggy you're not really paying as much attention oh my gosh and then yeah you're and then boom <laughs> focus even less on yeah. injury oh yeah. my goodness so there's a really interesting quote that i like and it goes the mind talks and the body listens what is your response to that i feel like for dancers it's primarily seen or interpreted negatively. Um, for example, when I was coming back from my injury, I would tell myself, you're still injured, and my body would be like, yep, you are. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though I was doing great in my recovery. Um, mm -hmm. But that being said, you can also turn it around and say, I'm gonna have a great day today, yeah, and really seriously. shape your day. Your words are so powerful. Yeah, but I just think, um, since dancers are so, they're very much perfectionists, and that's just like the culture of our We've craft. We've been trained to have years of like a mindset of what could be better. Exactly. Like, I think enough. a lot of it is more, comes more negatively. Mm. Um, because we're constantly correcting and trying to improve, but that can really easily slip into that's not right, mm -hmm. that wasn't good enough, mm -hmm. that was wrong, as opposed to Getting here's how it can yourself. be better. Yeah. Or, yeah. or having gratitude for what is good, what you do love about your body. Yeah. So, yeah, moving on to that, like, what are some good techniques, like, that you found that either work for yourself or that you've learned through being psychology of how we can change that inner dialogue and, you know, not be so you know, like, to support ourselves, to have our own back, because the world yeah. is never going to stop, like, throwing, like, criticism mm -hmm. or shade, like, what, you know, the stress from the world isn't going to stop coming, but how can we, you know, strengthen ourselves from the inside out yeah. from the lens of psychology? Um, one thing that's really easy to do is to just grab a pack of post-it notes or a notebook um, and just write positive affirmations. Even if you don't believe them, if you continue to write them, the more you do that, it's crazy how the brain will take over and it will become mm -hmm. truth in your mind. So if you write, you know, the classic, I am enough, I am good enough, or even I'm, I'm flexible, beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm strong, yeah, yeah, I'm strong, things like that, the I am, and then a positive mm -hmm. affirmation at the end. That can be great. I know a lot of people, um, who put them on their wall, or they put it on their mirror, so they see it in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like a habit. It's like any negative like yeah. habit or mindset that we're repeating to ourselves. We can do that through healthy words and yeah. habits like that, too. Yeah, I also think um, right before you go to bed, whether it just be writing one thing down or journaling about your day um, in a positive reflection, can really set you into your sleep in a good mood, which will start you in your next day mm -hmm. in a better mood because yeah. I have gone to sleep so mad so many times and the next day is just never any better. Yeah, <laughs> but oh then, my gosh, even if you've had the worst day, like finding three things that you can be grateful for right. about your life or yourself or your body, like anything just to like have that little shift in your exactly. mindset. Exactly. And then once you have that shift in your mind, that triggers throughout your whole body, you become more relaxed yeah. and then you can yeah, release a little more tension and be more relaxed yeah. and just more girl I feel calm just like <laughs> talking about this I'm like yeah <laughs> I do I do it every night I journal mm -hmm. every night I've been doing it since since I came to college actually my best friend here um, started me doing it freshman mm -hmm. year because I saw her doing it and I asked yeah. her what she was doing um, she's in the dance program with me and she's like oh this mm -hmm. like helps me calm down after a stressful day Mm -hmm. And I have four years worth of journals every day, wow, things that I write that's down. that's amazing. Yeah, so it's, I've definitely personally benefited from that one. That's great. That's something we do a lot, or at least that I do a lot in my yoga classes, like set up a mantra or an mm -hmm. affirmation or something. An that, intention or something. Yeah, yeah, to repeat to yourself throughout class when 
you know, it's getting challenging, especially for the challenging poses, like, can you repeat or challenging, like, dance class, you know, yeah. can you have that, like, mantra of, like, I'm growing, I'm learning, right. I'm strong, like, I'm capable, anything like that, that'll just, like, it's like a, a boost, it gives you that extra, like, energy yeah. to get through what you're doing. For sure. So... Do you think also things like meditation and yoga can help dancers like deal with stress? Like what? Yeah, so one way to eliminate some of your physical uh, symptoms of anxiety or stress can be actually meditating um, because it relaxes your body from the inside. Um, mm -hmm. So you can either listen to a guided meditation um, or you can go through one yourself. If you know one, you can guide yourself through it. Um, sometimes that's helpful for people that have minds that wander and they, yeah, they stop having listening. Something. Having like saying it to yourself really mm -hmm. keeps you connected. Um, or just listening to your breath or yeah. something like that. Or some nice like relaxing music. Yeah, something else I like to do is um, tensing my muscles and then releasing them because you mm. get the two extremes. So sometimes you might not know you're holding tension in your shoulders. And I Intuitive say tense your shoulders course. and you're like... Oh, they're already, they're already tense. tense. <laughs> yeah, so it's... You need to consciously relax. That's a good one. Like, yeah, yeah, clenching everything and then consciously... Like, squeezing as hard as you can and then releasing so you mm. get the total opposite. And I think that's that's a good way to start my meditations. Mm. I like to do the tensing first. Yeah, um, get your body into a relaxed state yeah. beforehand. Yeah. That's a really good tip. Yeah. So what do you think, like, as a collective for teachers and you know, as students and as peers to our other dancers, how can we, like, cultivate more of, like, a mindset of positivity and self-love and, you know, getting rid of, like, how can we make the dance world a less stressful environment? That's a very heavy question, yeah. but I'm interested to um, hear your thoughts. Well, I have two things that I thought of right away. Mm -hmm. One was just being more self-aware as an individual. Um, knowing where you hold your stress, knowing what stresses you out more. Um, I did a project last year in my psychology class on performance anxiety, and I didn't even think that people get performance anxiety in their technique classes. I was just thinking, oh, when they get on stage, you know, you're nervous to go on. Mm -hmm. But people get anxiety in class, in rehearsals, in auditions. So knowing specifically yourself what triggers your anxieties um, so that you can better combat them. Um, and then... Mm. Yeah, I would just say the second one that I thought of right away was um, the attitude of the teacher towards the student. Um, we've, there's been a lot of things changing socially <laughs> recently, um, and it's become important that teachers um, are caring for their students. Um, mm -hmm. So showing good behavior, uh, for example, the positive self-talk. If your teacher says, that's wrong, you're fat anything like that, it's going to, like, reinstate itself so in your mind. So you're looking up to them as this, like, authority figure that kind right. of becomes your own inner... So if they uh, have these positive things to say to you, even if it's not, oh, that was a perfect turn, they say, oh, you really mm -hmm. used your arms well. That's just something mm -hmm. positive that you can then repeat back to yourself. So really yeah. modeling that good self-talk behavior, um, mm -hmm. I think is really important. Yeah, or even just changing like the words. It could be a criticism, but if you say it in the right way, yeah. like um, something that we learned in yoga school when we were, you know, helping each other like get better at teaching, we would say like, I loved this, or you did this great. Um, I noticed yeah. this, and then I wonder if maybe you could try doing this instead yeah. of like, well, this sucked and you that really just wasn't like, you know, like even just... And not even teachers, like, we can start that now, just the way that we talk to each other in rehearsals, when yeah. we're collaborating, choreographing together, like, yeah. putting so, you know, any way that sure. we're interacting with each other, we can use those, like, positive ways of speaking. For sure. And, like, set that good example, because it really does start with, like, each and every one of us. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Well, on that note, 
<laughs> I think that's a perfect place to stop. Um, I'll be leaving Janelle's social media and Instagram info in the in the link below. So definitely check her out. She's a beautiful dancer and mover, and Aww. definitely <laughs> definitely spreading the love and knowledge. And I'm really excited for everything that you have in store to share Thanks. with the world. Thanks, Janelle. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>